The following program is a product of the students of Morpho's Training for Television and Film, a project of the Mohammed Amin Foundation, supported in part by a grant from Foundation Open Society Institute and Open Society Initiative for East Africa. The views expressed in this program are not necessarily the views of the Mohammed Amin Foundation or Open Society Initiative for East Africa. Tangu zamani haki zetu hatukujua Umefikia wakati wako nami kuchukua hatua Haki na ukweli tumekuwa tukiminia Wazee kwa vijana chukua hatua chukua hatua Welcome to the Hatua Show. This ni show yetu na wewe, eh, where you and I seek solutions to the problems that are affecting this country. The Hatua Show is about awareness, responsibility, and action. Meaning we want to be aware That's about right. the issues around us in That's our communities. Right. Want to be responsible, and we most importantly want to take action. Now, this is going to be tricky, because the topic that we have for you today is about the death penalty. So when you come back, a feature that will bring us close that issue when you come back here on the Atua Show. Stay with us. Atua. Ah, good one. By the way, that's Anne Mitaru. Yeah, and this is Jimmy Gathu. Thanks for joining us on the oh, Atua no, Show. We, we forgot to say our names, you know, so. It happens. Um, you know, you know we, we have situations uh, where our loved ones, our brothers and sisters, our fathers and our mothers are, are sent to prison. And the question we ask ourselves is, should it happen to them? Should they be sentenced to death? Should it be acted upon? Or should we say once and for all, perhaps we need to think twice about the issue of the death, death penalty. The feature we're about to show you will not only shock you, but we hope will bring you closer to our discussion today. Mimi na ukweli kwamba kama mtu atapatikana ni muuaji yeye ameua hata ana right yepi ya kuuliwa hata wengine wako hapo walifungwa kuhusu mkate peke yake mkate ujui ni siku gani wala ni saa gani unaweza kunyongwa ukihukumiwa kunyongwa ni unyongwe kwani unahukumiwa kunyongwa na mdomo alafu narudi tena kuwekwa huko unawekwa huko kufanya nini the debate now needs to be asked whether holding people unconditionally uh, without executing them whether that is cruel and inhuman punishment My wife was found murdered outside a police station. So the first thing I did was to go to the police station to find out how it happened right outside of the police station. So when I, I went there, I've never come out. My immediate reaction was, whew, I was shocked. Because you know, the moment I was put in, I was not told what I'd been charged with. I came to realize about, I was in the police station for one month before I knew what I was charged with. When, when the judge mentioned that you have been sentenced to death, now, you get another attitude, you change completely. Because you think that you are going to die. Shai, mimi yiko na mwaka kama kumi na nani hivi. Katika kodemu. Sasa niko na mea kumi na sita sasa katika gereza. Seven years. This is my seventh year now. I was condemned in um, the two or three March. The definition of torture under the United Nations Convention Against Torture includes any cruel, inhuman, degrading treatment or punishment. We do contend death 
penalty amounts to an inhuman uh, form of punishment. As such, death penalty amounts to torture. We think it's an abuse of rights, particularly since uh, there's no legal system that has been found to be infallible. I was charged uh, 98, 99 January for murder. So I went through the process, I did my appeal, and I was convicted and brought here. Yangu ni ya wizi wa kutumia mabavu. Kitu kile nikifanya ngasitakiwa ni kuhusu mata ama kuoa. Ah ni hatia ya wizi wa kutumia mabavu. Ingawa sikuwa nimetenda kushikwa kwangu ni kwa sababu ya kisiasa. Na hatimaye nikasoma mpaka mahali hapa. Niliweza kupiga kumnyanganya mtu gari. Lakini ilikuwa ilikuwa ni kesi ya robbery lakini hasa mimi nilikamatwa na mada. When you walk into prison and someone is on death row, to begin with, they live on their own. Death row in committee, I think we are about 1,000 right now, the whole of death row. These guys don't do any work. They just wake up in the morning, they just chill the whole day. Samoja, na dakika kumi na tano, kitu kama ayo, mimi nakuja na kooga hapa, inje, bada ya ayo, mina rudi, kukunywa uji, bada ya ayo, mina rudi na kaa. Yani kongojia masaa hili ambayo tutatoka hapa inje sasa wote saa ya jua sambili. Pia nae sasa saa hiyo ni saa yetu ya kanisa na wale pia nae wale wachesaji kama mpira kitu kama hiyo. The United Nations standard minimum rules on treatment of prisoners sets out the basics, the space which an inmate is supposed to be confined, basics like uh, the clothing, the quality of food, the quantity of food. We have come a, a long way. <laughs> Ineza kuumiza tubu. Mimi kurudisa wea hapa ndani. Tunafinyana sana kwa sababu. Katika kwa sele tunalala watu kuminabili. Na hii sele, wakati unapo jengu walikuwa na jengu kwa watu watatu kwa sele. You can easily get a communicable disease. You can easily get... Maybe just from being packed like a sardine. Ni ni ukweli hile kitu hata kama unaingia ndani unaona. Hakuna barangeti. Hakuna matres, tango kutokia 1988 hiyo. Hakuna mabadiliko katika prison ile nimeona sasa ni hii kwa sababu uniform. Hakuna hile sa hile unaona ni jela hamelete uniform, anapea watu. Kile kitu naetua sabuni jela. They had a big boy, they have a big boy and a big girl. Keith is 13, he'll be 13 in November then the girl will be 11 in January. Watu wangu si watu wanaelewa mambo sana ya ya mahakama ama mambo ya kuhusu kondemu. Sasa kama vile walivyokuwa wamesikia mimi nimenyongwa na nilikuwa nikiwasiliana nao. Lakini bado ya kusikia umetupa waenda kwao. Sasa wanakata tamaa. Wengine hata sasa hii mimi naona kama maybe wamesafanya matanga. Oh, I haven't seen my kids for seven years, by the way. Yeah, it's very stressing. And those are some of the things I really don't want to keep in my heart because they really bring me down. If I know what they've been through, if I know that they know the whole truth about the whole issue, it really bogs me down. But I just pray for them. And I believe one day we are going to meet. We have had instances where the High Court on Appeal has criticized the findings of the subordinate court, the evaluation of the evidence. We have, fa we have had instances where people have been sentenced to hang by the subordinate court. 
on uh, insufficient evidence or contradictory evidence. It's really sad and painful when you find people on death rows and you don't have enough evidence actually to convict them. I had the assessors who I believe are the people of Kenya also judging me and they had their unanimous verdict of not guilty. They gave their reasons for that which has not been considered by anybody, which was not considered at all. So I mean in the public court I know I'm innocent and personally I know I'm innocent. Above 60% of the people in prison are innocent. The common people are, uh, really believe in an eye for an eye and they think that uh, people should be executed for, for egregious crimes and, and offences. Everyone's done something wrong in their life. You've done something wrong, I've done something wrong. We all don't deserve to die though. If you're a murderer, then we don't see why you should not be murdered also. Then you ask most of the people in the society what do you think, they say maybe they deserve it. We don't want criminals, we are fighting crime and yet they are not aware of the effect and the process. I'm telling you to tell those gays to have a positive attitude. Why don't we help this gay get a right perspective of life so that he can live properly? There is a lot of awareness and education that needs to be done. If I was to start living every single moment waiting for the hangman to come, then I'd die of stress. Gays have died of stress just thinking of when they're going to be hanged. The failure to execute the court orders by either killing these people and keeping them without information not only exerts uh, psychological torture on them but is illegal wewe uambiwe leo utanyongwa siku ile ile ambapo ulikuwa umetupwa kwamba wewe utaenda jela na utanyongwa sasa wewe ukiamka kesho unajua kesho mtanyongwa kesho kutu mtanyongwa Kesi mingine ni tanyongo, kesi kutuwa ni tanyongo, kesi mingine ni tanyongo. Yani yu yu kila siku. Yani roo yetu in, inakaga na wasuwasi sana. Sharia ichukuliwe, ichupate mkondo wake. The judiciary system is not very effective. At least kabla ujatenda, utakuna fikiria marambili. survive even two days I without seeing people I know, people I love, or my family. I, I don't know what, yeah. seven years you wake up, and that man was, was saying, keso, keso kutua, keso keso yake. Keso yake, you know, and you don't know whether you're going to be executed. We want to bring out our guest on, on this program, the face of this discussion. He's a uh, human rights activist. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm round of applause to Mr. Geduku. Why do we have a law that is not being, that is not being executed or enforced for that matter? Why? Since 1987, nobody has ever been hanged after the hanging of Ochuka, the guy who was brought in from Tanzania after the 1982 coup. And since then, the president or you know, the head of state has never signed any other uh, death execution order. As much as uh, the law is clear, you know, that death penalty is, uh, is, uh, is unfair, it's still there as a law. Exactly. Yeah. But that's the question, is, is it unfair? Because, um, and, and to, you know, listening to what uh, the lady was saying, that um, almost 60% of the people in death, on death row are, are innocent. But then, how, how do you remove that from the pain that people who have suffered? I do feel, you know, the, the convicts in, in, in the future. But I'm also thinking of the people who say, if you've been convicted, I have suffered because of you being a murderer. There are many countries in the world yes. where the death penalty has been abolished. South Africa is one of them. And uh, if uh, it was to be you know, in place, mm -hmm. then people like Nelson Mandela should have been hung because of planning to overthrow the government. Exactly. That's right. uh, the other thing is that, uh, as the lady said, more than 60%, maybe 70 or 80% of people, mm -hmm. not only in death row, but in prison, in prison for that are, are in for, for, for nothing. nothing. They are innocent. Mm -hmm. Maybe we you can know. take that up with um, Mr. Henry Courier from the Legal Resource Foundation. Welcome, Mr. Courier. 
Mr. Korea, Mr. Korea works with the Legal Resource Foundation and you have a prisons program where you provide legal aid to the prisoners. Tell us more about the innocence or the lack of innocence of the inmates on death row. I will not dispute the figures which have been put across that approximately between 60 to 70 percent of the people who are, with the, who are in our penal institutions are innocent. Uh, with the, on the question of, with regard to the death, to the death penalty, uh, I think there are, there are quite some compelling arguments for the, why the death penalty should be abolished. Of course, Jimmy has posed the question that uh, what about the victims? What about the families of the victims of the, of the person who has been killed by this person? Mm -hmm. First, what I would like us to realize is that, is that the criminal justice system is made up of human beings. That is the, the prosecutors, so the, po the police. The human so error. There, is, there is that probability of error. And if I may take this argument further and take the, take the risk of appearing to be apportioning blame or pontificating, I would say that um, our criminal justice system quite often has come under heavy criticism for doing short investigations, for being biased, corruption. So when you take all these factors into account, then it means that uh, they are co the, 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 the arguments for, for the abolishment of the death penalty are very compelling. Secondly, we may say that by executing the person who has purportedly or allegedly kill, killed another person, we are seeking to pursue the ends of justice. I think that's a very convoluted form of justice because in my what I think is that um, by killing a person, even if let us let us say that uh, probably the criminal justice system was perfect and this person has actually killed, even if you are going to kill this and this other person, first you are taking away two lives, two wrongs have never made a right, and secondly, I don't know what form of justice is this which demands that we must kill you. Right. It is not justice at all; it's right. revenge. Right. <laughs> um, right. uh, Madam Kangede from the Ministry of uh, Home Affairs, uh, you're in charge of aftercare department. Yes. Um, <laughs> Is, is, is it fair to, to say that we must abolish it? I mean, I see what Mr. Kure is saying, that uh, two wrongs don't make a right. Uh, I'm thinking of what uh, rehabilitation can do to support that issue of, of let's, you know, if, since they're being re rehabilitated and it's working, maybe you need to abolish it to also save the 60% of people who are innocent. Is it working, Madam Kangede? Uh, I will emphasize on the issue of giving these people a chance, a second chance. Powerful. And giving them a chance, yeah. giving them a chance, very powerful, powerful. We endeavor to rehabilitate, resettle, and reintegrate these people back in the community. Which chance is this, ma'am? Um, um, with, with, with lack of proper investigations, with, with, with all those human errors that Korea has said, um, which, which chance is this, ma'am? Uh, we have a review board, mm -hmm. which normally reviews these sentences. And a probation officer will go to the ground and establish whether the home condition is conducive. Will he be deceived by the community? Right. Thank you very much, Madam Kange. Pastor Moto, you've, you, you, you've you been on death row yes. before. And um, do you think that perhaps because of your experience of what you've gone through, we should abolish it? Or maybe, uh, there it. Is, yeah, maybe, maybe to some extent we need to keep it, sir. Jambo moja ni kwamba, kuna uchungu. Mwingi sana, vile mmezema, kama mimi nimekaa hapo, nilishikuwa mwaka wa thamaina moja, na nikawakumiwa kifo mwaka wa thamaina tano. Na tuweze kuangaza vile mmechukua hatua, tuangaza tafadhali, hii kitu kiondolewe. Sio kulazimisha? Na kusikia. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me get back to you. And, and maybe Gidhuku uh, and Kure, you can help us here. Are we looking at the issue completely? I mean, what, what is the problem? Is it the, the lack of proper investigative services? Principally, there are three, there are three goals of any penal system. One of them is to rehabilitate. Well, the other one is to deter, and the other one is to incapacitate. By rehabilitation, we are saying that we want to reform these people so that they can become acceptable members of the society, since we believe that these people have got a role to play in, transform, in transforming the society. When we say that we are going to execute the people, then of course the, the goal of the penal, of the penal institutions of, of rehabilitating them is completely lost. <clears throat> you cannot, you cannot uh, rehabilitate a person who you have already killed. Mm. Maybe we'll take a break and when we come back we'll, we'll pick up on the deterrence issue and does the death penalty make a difference? We'll be right back. Stay with us. Hi, welcome back to our tour. Uh, our topic for today is the issue of the death penalty. Should it be abolished or should we keep it? Yeah, and just before we went on break, we're looking into the deterrence issue. That's right. Does, the, does by issuing death penalties and having people on death row reduce the crime rate, for example, in our country? 
I don't think so. Why do I say this? First, the police have been releasing what they call the crime statistics. I think it is after every half an year. And what they have been indicating is that the crime rate seems to be decreasing. Mm -hmm. There are people who may dispute those figures, but that is not the issue here. The fact right. that we are the indicators that crime has been decreasing, exactly. and yet we have not carried out a, an execution in the last 20 or so years, means that death penalty has got no deterrent value whatsoever. That's right. Yeah. I want to hear from, from people who have suffered. I know you have got somebody who is Ambaye uh, Kojela Visasa. Your experience, man, what do you think? And tell us about you know, the person who's in prison and what that feels come a victim of Ambaye Kojela says. I think it's been abolished because of the fact that people are going to be able to do it. I think it's been a good thing to do it. I think it's been a good thing to do it. Sasa unaona vitu kama hizo hizi vitu kama investigation zingekuwa zinafanywa vizuri kama vile ule madam amesema baria ya probation mm. nimeenda kwa makoti siku nyingi na nimeona kuna probation officers nao watu wanaweza kachunguza background ya huyo mtu unajua unaweza kuwa wewe ni muuaji wa kila siku umezoea lakini kuna wengine hawajai tenda hilo jambo na kama hata ametenda alitenda siku moja na labda iko hata kupenda kwake Now, Gib Gibson, Gibson, I think, has been uh, death row for a while, Bona Gibson. Karibu, sir, let's give him a round of applause. Yeah, he is somebody who's been face to face with this sort of scenario. Gibson, tombe maonia kumzwa. Mimi mwenye ni likuwa katika kondem. Ni kwa ni mehukumiwa kwa kosa la kwamba ni mempiga. Alikuwa honorable, mini, assistant minister, po, wakati huwa likuwa na itua echakala. Na ukweli, nilikuwa sijatenda jambo lile na nimeshiriki mambo mengine ya uhalifu lakini hiyo lakini kwa wakati ule sikutenda lile jambo nikikuliza Gibson wewe ulitenda mambo mengine hapo awali yeah. lakini hii haukutenda yes. kuhukumiwa kifo ilifanya ukabadilisha mienendo yako kusema sitaiba tena yeah. au sitaua tena wakati nilikuwa kule nilijuta sana kwa jambo sijatenda na yale mimi utenda huwa sipatikani <laughs> ama nikitenda huwa nikipewa adhabu nikiwa kotini natumia njia ya kipesa na ninatoka <laughs> na yule hana pesa anapelekwa anyway <laughs> nilipohukumiwa nisikia roho yangu imeniambia sasa nafasi yako ni hii na ni ya mwisho kwa hivyo unasema itupiliwe mbali ama ibaki nikisema naweza sema itupiliwe mbali asante sana bwana kesi the big, bigger issues that's being addressed is the the gaps we have in our judiciary system. Huge, but like, I don't know, huge, do you want to make huge. reference to that in any way? Yeah, I think um, as uh, uh, my good friend Gibson has said there, uh, it also depends on how much do you have in your pocket. That's how you find so many people in. So it should be abolished. You know, you know, yeah, mtu, mtu, mtu wa kijua, maybe I'm in for life, but not waiting to be hanged. And I don't know whether it's tomorrow. Have the reforms in the judiciary seen people, more people who are guilty than get the sentencing, Mr. Kuria? Um, what I can say is that uh, since the reforms in the judiciary started, we have seen uh, the, the, the judiciary has come out very strongly to criticize what they call short day investigations. We are seeing people who have been accused of particular of, uh, crimes, whatever crimes, including the ones which carry the death penalty, getting away because the judiciary is coming out very clearly and saying uh, that the, the investigations were very, the investigations were short day, the, the prosecution did not adduce sufficient evidence. So the judiciary will be, the judiciary will be measured with the extent to which they have been able, they have been able to uphold the, the due process. Then I would say that the judiciary is up to the task. When we come back on Hatua Show, we'll take your comments and your questions. Eh? When we come back, stay here on the Hatua Show. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back to Hatua. We're talking about the issue of the death penalty. It would be interesting to find out if we have someone in the audience who thinks there are instances where... We need to keep it. Maybe young lady in red, you could give us an opinion on that? My name is Rosalind, and I think we are totally missing the point. 
Because what about the person who actually was killed? What about the person who was robbed at gunpoint? I have been robbed at gunpoint. Oh, really? And, and, and I cannot stand to say that that person should, should now, I don't know, I pay taxes for that person to continue staying in prison eating from my taxes. I think death penalty actually has its place in this state. Okay. Wow, I saw another hand. Yes, yes. My name is Zach. I think death penalty is good when in extreme cases of something like what the Ochukas did, of treason. But... Murder is extreme. Yes? Murder is extreme. Well, murder is extreme, but it's really hard to prove that really someone deserves to die because he murdered. But in treason, it's obvious. So I think in extreme cases of such things where even national security is at, uh, at stake. Good one. Yes. Um, my name is Fiona Ngarachi. I'm going to be pro-death penalty from a human rights perspective. Wow. Now, I okay. watched the feature okay. and I'm seeing the conditions these people have to live in. I mean, community is not the best place to be, no. despite Mudiawari's, you know, valiant efforts. So basically, put the poor guys out of their misery. Just kill them. Because <laughs> I have to, if me personally, I cannot speak for the people who have been on death row, but me personally, if I had to live like that, of course, with also the psychological trauma, just kill me. Put me out of my misery. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Uh, my name is Victor Kamau. I'm an advocate. I am of the very strong view that the death penalty should be banned forever, everywhere. Uh, the justice of man, the justice of man is imperfect. When you sentence a man to death, you do not teach him a lesson that he will never forget. You teach him a lesson that he will never remember. <laughs> something pretty radical right now and just change to Pastor Ezra. You, you, you know, you're representing the religious fraternity. God is a just God. If you do something wrong, he will chastise you. And he says it in his word. Are we missing the point, Reverend? Well, if I take the clergy position, <laughs> when you commit evil, the justice demands that you die for it. But Christ died for that. So you are given time to repent. So I, I am not for the idea that people should be just killed for the moment they have committed it, but they should be given a chance to make another choice. We are always in this prison. We have the been, second we have been chance, there a few days. The second yeah. chance comes yeah, up. Be given that maybe chance. With, the od with the audience views we've had so far, maybe one of the members, a family or a friend of someone who, ha who, is, or an, who was on death row, Mama Maina, maybe you could give us a take your opinion right now. Mina Fikiria. Izimu ya kabisa. Izimu ya kabisa. Izimu ya kabisa. Kwa sababu unajua pale, kuna kwa ngana shida. Unasikia wa mtu anasema wa kwa sapusu kukaa three people in a room. Pale wanakaa 13. Kwa hivyo hata mtu wa anakufa. Kabla siku yake hata ya kujongo wa ijafika. What was your name again? Just say it's okay. But yes. Rosalind, is there anyone who, who, who shares in Rosalind's sentiments? And I, I like what you say. You know what? <laughs> just, just kill me, man. But is there anyone who's been affected? Yes. Have you, have you been? Are you for death row? Yeah. Um, okay. My name is Lina. Lina. Yeah. And I think we're missing the point. I think we're looking at this from the perspective of somebody in death row and the family of somebody in death row. Why don't we look at the person who suffered? Because while that, the person who's in death row's family is suffering, Somebody is suffering because their father died of being shot, yeah? So death row is, you know, it's not always about rehabilitation. Sometimes it's about punishment. Sometimes it is punishment that will bring us back to, will, will, bring, will bring forgiveness. Or, or if closure. you kill my father, if you're killed, I'll, I'll, I'll be fine. But if you're not killed, I won't be fine. You think it will bring closure to you? If, yeah. Like, like um, uh, you, you think if somebody was punished, the guys who carjacked you, if they're punished, it will bring closure to you? Yes. I would love for those people to be punished, honestly. I live in fear every day that, again, I, I will be carjacked, again, I will be robbed Is at life points. imprisonment sufficient? I don't know. There's always a chance that there will be a jailbreak. <laughs> and they will get out. <laughs> yeah. OK, one more. We need to get one more comment from you here, Suze. For or against your name, tell yes, us. Yes, my name is James Mwanzia. Mwanzia, yes. Nilikuwa ni meokumewa kifo. Na hile ni nasungumza ni kwamba ni mekapo kwa mtu wa miyakasaba. 
na ile ilinifanya nikae hapo ni kwa kukosa herufu 35 ile tulikuwa tunaitishwa police station na wale wenzangu nilioshikwa nao wakatoa hizo pesa walienda nyumbani Mi nikarudi nikashikanishwa na watu wengine siwajui nikaenda kustatua kwa ile kitu sijui na kutoka hapo yule magistrate nilienda kwake akawa anataka 120000 nikasema sipeani na kutoka hapo nikahukumiwa kifo tulihukumiwa tukiwa watatu Mi personally ni mimi nimeweza kutoboa hiyo hukumu ama mimi nimeweza kutoka na apelo katika high court. Kwa hivyo mtu akihukumiwa kivo anatokaga hapo akiwa na mambo mawili. Either anakuvea hapo ama ukitoka ukiwa huku wanatenda unakuwa mtu mtulivu kabisa mpaka maisha yako. Ama ukiwa ulienda pale ukiwa ujatenda na unaona hile mateso liopata pale ukitoka unaamua huo hao watu wote na wao kae vizuri. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, one 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 last stop. Poor poor mzee. Why do you need to get some money? Poor poor mzee. Poor poor. Poor mzee. Poor poor. 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 Poor yeah, I am uh, strongly condemning the issue of uh, hanging somebody all death penalty. In the real sense that such a people in their cells are really suffering for the negligence of other people. So I am strongly condemning, to the best of my knowledge, <laughs> that it should be in the death penalty of this country. We, we, need, oh, we need your help on this one. We need your help on this one. Now, oh my goodness. Uh, um, let me say what is this? It, it doesn't. It's not working. Rehabilitation. I mean, the gentleman has said that you become worse off than you've gotten. The inadequacies in the criminal justice system. It's like they are adding mm, insult. Into They're making your work injury. harder. Yeah. Because in some systems, let's say Japan, is a requirement for all cases to have a probation officer's report. At trial? During trial? After trial? At what point is this report important? During, during trial. Oh, during trial, OK. Before conviction. Before conviction. So that it gives a very good picture of this person who is before a court. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All things are taken into consideration. In that way, we will be able to avoid situations where these people are added into prisons and they have not committed offenses. Right. Well spoken. Well spoken. Right. We'll take a short break and when we come back, now you realize Bonakuria, Bonagiduku, um, we, it's very emotive this one. So we'll, we, you know what, we're going to ask you to help us on this one because Anne will take us to the crossroads and ask us, all of us, what can we do to make either decision? So what must be done? Okay. Oh, my coffee, where you are? Oh, you know, this is like, it's a kind, it's a kind of show where, you know, where Anne and I just get humbled, you know, because it's Absolutely. solutions that come from you, which is very important. Absolutely. We're at the crossroads. The Hatua crossroads. At the crossroads, we have three roads. A road of awareness, the road of responsibility, and the road of action. And we need to take all three roads to be aware, to be responsible, and to take action. And so we just want some of the solutions we can give um, towards addressing this problem. We can start at the very back. Kindly tell us who you are. Hi, my name is Thomas. Welcome. Okay, about the solutions. First, we're going to reform our prisons department. Another thing, we should have proper prosecutions. Because uh, after the aid dropout, maybe a police officer, he can't prosecute a murder case to conclusion. Maybe he's going against a lawyer like Mutula Kilonzo. Understood. Understood. The big question is what can you do? We can act as we can rehabilitate these guys from prison. Okay. You know, you know, the problem starts when they come out of prison and yeah. you and I can't accept them. 
Yeah, there is also the problem and with that's rehabilitation. Right. Part when of I'm rehabilitation. Able, I'm able, I'm able yeah. That's where the problem starts. And the thing the government person was speaking about probation officers and something like that. Only thing we, we see probation only in TV. Maybe we can find out. I'm Fina Habade. I know I don't support death row because I don't have a right to. But there are the people who also feel they have a lot of bile inside. We need to deal with this as a country, as a people. So we need to support these families who've lost. And secondly, there's a big problem with funding because you've just had, it's taxpayers' money. So you're paying tax to support these people. And so I'm asking myself, why can't prisoners support themselves? I mean, the government has a lot of land, for example, and we can have whereby prisoners go to work in the farms and the earnings that come from there, 50% we use to support the government, the um, prisoners, and 50% we use to support the prisoners' family and the government can see what to do. Oh, I think the government should do this. The person who is, or has maybe committed that offense should be maybe trained and be given something to do. Uh -huh. uh, because maybe he killed because he was idle. Uh -huh. yeah, he had nothing to do. Hey. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, ah, Eric Sermon, sorry, green eyes. I as a person, I need to take some action. I need to either say that I'm pro, I need to say I'm against, I need to support reforms, but I need to know that, I need to show that as an individual, I'm doing something, I'm taking an action. I think that's what it should Do you have start. an example on what you can do? If I can show that I do support it right. in any way, uh -huh. that's what I have to do. And that's make what your I will views do known. to make my view known. Right. right. Rosalind, what would you do? What can you do? All the people who have been convicted this far should be executed. And then we should have um, advocates actually prosecuting as opposed to police officers prosecuting the cases, that way it will be more thorough to ensure that only people who actually are guilty get in. We need to wind this up, but I'm gonna ask one person to speak, and you'll, you'll forgive me if I do this again, I'm sorry. But you all heard of the Pio da Gama Pinto story, and the person who was convicted for that murder, Maoniako. Gina, Kwanza, I love Maoni. Kwa majina na ito Kisilu wa Mutua. Kisilu wa Mutua. Hapa kuna mambo mawili ya nakimbizana hii. Kuna stoko tu ambaye na ukumiwa kunyongwa na kuna mada ame ukumiwa kifo. Mimi napinga manda ya dere. Kuna pinga manda? Kwa right, sir. Nilisiko hali 1965 na nika ukumiwa kifo the same year. Sababu wa kusapoti mada ya dere ni sababu B. Nilipo kuwa pale, kulikuwa na mugiri ya mamoja alikuwa na hiko kazungu. Yeye mke wake alimfumania kama ana sini na mtu mume mwingine. Alipokumfumania yeye alingoa kisu. Baada ya kungoa kisu wale watu walishindwa na kuamuka. Ile shoko iliwafanya wakashindwa hata na kufaa nguo. Alimwambia ule mume we toka uende. Akamwambia hiyo mama kwenda lete kamba ile akamfunga hiyo mama mguu hii na akafunga kwa kisiki kule akachukua kamba ingine akafunga mguu hii akakafunga kwa kisiki kule akachukua kamba ingine akamfunga mkono akafunga kule na mkono ingine akafunga kule akamwambia wewe hii kitu ndio inafanya tukosane mimi na wewe kwa hivyo wacha nichinje tu kule mimi na wewe leo mzee wangu Thank you for joining us. It's been a great show. Let's meet at the crossroads, people. If you have any comments, anything you'd like to share on the topic, write to us. We have numbers. At the end of the show, we have an email address and a PO Box address. Go to Jimmy, anything you'd like to say? <laughs> ah, wow. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Let's give you a round of applause because you've been amazing. Thank you. Tangu zamani, haki zetu, hatukujua. 
umefikia wakati wako nami kuchukua hatua haki na ukweli tumekuwa tukininia wazee kwa vijana chukua hatua chukua hatua